All right, well, let's take a look at some algebraic problems that involve fractions. And as it turns out, the best way of solving these algebraic problems that involve fractions is to not actually use algebra, but just to draw the representation of our fractions. Uh, so for example, let's take a typical problem. After construction, a parking lot was reduced in size by one fifth, and there's 8,000 spaces remaining, and we want to find out, typical question, how many are present before the construction, and we'll go ahead and use this using a tape diagram, area model, bar our model, the terms are pretty much interchangeable. So let's go ahead and draw that. So we can represent the situation. Well, here's our parking lot. And we're going to lose one-fifth of those spaces. So we'll divide our parking lot into five pieces, and we'll lose one-fifth of them. So those are gone. You can't park there, but you can park in the remaining spaces here. Now, we're told that there's 8,000 parking spaces, so that means that if these represent 8,000 spaces, then each of these blocks represents 2,000 spaces. And also, because we divided the parking lot into five equal pieces originally, this block here also represents 2,000 pieces. And so if I think about this, this was my original parking lot before construction took out this section, then there's two, four, six, eight, ten thousand spaces originally in the parking lot. And we'll go ahead and give our answer to that. The parking lot originally had ten thousand spaces. Now, if you're uncomfortable with drawing the tape diagram, you could actually express this as an algebraic problem, but it's actually a somewhat difficult problem to write down for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that it is a very common mistake to try and solve this problem and to find out, for example, if I reduce the size by one-fifth, then I might find out that the parking lot had 6,400 spaces before construction. And that's not true because if it only had 6,400 spaces and lost one-fifth of them, it can't have had 8,000 afterwards. And there are other varieties of wrong answer that are caused by not reading the actual situation correctly. And the easiest way of ensuring that you have read the situation correctly is if you actually draw the picture that shows your parking lot losing one-fifth of its spaces. Again, another classic problem. Jacket's price was increased by one quarter to $100. What was the original price? And again, we can solve this algebraically. And the most common wrong answer to this is to say that the original price was 75. And the reasoning is something along the lines of a quarter of 100 is 25. So the jacket's price increased by $25 and so on. That's not correct, though. And we'll see why by using a tape diagram. So we'll go ahead and let the tape represent the jacket's original price, and we're increasing that price by one quarter. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to take one quarter, and it's an increase. So this is the original price. If I want to increase it, I don't lose any of these pieces. I actually get one more. So I'm going to take one of these pieces and clone it, and that's my increase in price. Now we do know the new price is $100. So if this amount here represents $100, then there's one, two, three, four, five of these pieces. Each of these individual pieces must represent 20, which says that the original price of the jacket, just the green, is 80. And so the original price of the jacket, $80.